It's now time to talk footy. It's now time to talk about our club. It's now time to talk about how interesting it has been for everyone involved at the West Coast Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming Best in the Business, the Chief Executive, Trevor Nisbet. Trevor, you've been around footy administration and footy not just at an AFL level, waffle level, amateur level, footy in general. Have you ever had a more difficult time to manage the game from your role and from your vantage point? Uh, there's probably been some moments, Tim, along the way, but certainly this year has, has thrown up uh, everything that you, you didn't want. Uh, there's been some remarkable things that we've had on our plate along with, uh, and I guess it's no different to the other people in this room, the businesses that, uh, that they run and they're involved with, but it's, it's certainly been extraordinary and there's been some, uh, some, some tough periods, that's for sure. We're probably lucky where we are in regards to the remoteness of WA, but in, in general terms in regards to the industry itself, how do you think they've handled COVID-19 and the way that the game has continued against the odds in regards to the rest of the country? Well, I, th I think we've done a pretty good job to, to actually get games away. I think that's the most important thing. I think the thing that we're, we're really cognizant of is that we've had to lay people off and I'm not sure how we can do it any better other than, you know, some of our people need jobs and if there's anyone out there who's looking for people who are good quality people, please give us a call because we do need... We do need to look after our people, and it's something that uh, it's great playing games and having having the players out there. But back of house and all that sort of thing's been uh, been really difficult. But certainly, that I think the AFL have done as well as they possibly could in the circumstances, considering the loss of income, the the loss of momentum, and the, certainly the loss of crowds and people um, being able to go to the footy. That's why it's great to have a, a room like this with over 700 people. It's just wonderful. So we're halfway through the year. If you're sitting now in your chief executive role and looking out across the expanse of the AFL, what are the major challenges ahead for the rest of the year, including finals, including stuff that might even not be happening on the footy field? Yeah, well, I guess the, the challenge for the industry is to just keep getting games away and, and making sure that we've, uh, we can get through the season. Um, as we know, um, it's a really difficult time in other states and certainly in Victoria. Uh, now in New South Wales. So we're, uh, we're working as hard as we can just to get the season through. There are uh, so many other factors that are, uh, are now coming up that we need to deal with. And certainly one of them is as we get into the second half of the season, where can we play games and where can we continue to play games? And I think that's the, the critical part. The games are important. The players are important. How about the fans and the members and the corporates and the staff? I mean, how it's, it's, we look at it, oh, there's games on TV or there's games to go and watch, but how important is the industry away from the playing group? Well, the fans and the, and the, the corporate partners, et cetera, are a major part of the industry. If we don't have, and that's, I think, what's been so great about playing at uh, Optus Stadium is that we've been able to get people in and the 30,000 there or the, the 26 plus the other night sounded like 60 or 70,000. It was amazing because I think people needed to uh, clear their lungs. They needed <laughs> to ch shout and cheer and, you know, do some things that they haven't done for a long time and uh, get rid of some frustration and so forth. But it was um, fabulous to see so many people there. Uh, obviously, our, our fans and our, our partners are, are paramount to what we do. And that's why we've got to keep the game moving and keep playing if we can. And, and certainly it's a, a, a great opportunity in Western Australia to not only keep people safe, but to be, this, I think, the safest city in the world at the moment. And, uh, you know, that comes with the opportunity now to uh, have crowds at games. It's probably a, a how long is a piece of string, but and a bit uh, Nostradamus-like. Um, will footy ever be the same again? And if not, how long do we have to be patient? How long do you think, as an administrator, we have to be in this period? 
Well, I think we're going to be cautious for a long period of time. I don't think there's any doubt that um, this pandemic has changed the way we think about our business and the way we think about people in general because we, we've been a very disciplined state and we need to stay that way and I think we need to stay that way for, for a long period of time. And if we can do that, we've got an opportunity to have a near normal season next year. It won't be the same. Uh, it's a good question because there are so many things that have changed our thinking and how we do things. And I think football in general has really never been a, uh, it's never really been a revenue problem for football. It's been a, a, a cost issue. And we've probably taken a lot of things for granted in the past and now we can't. And I think that's a good thing because that, with that means that you have to be not only resilient, but you have to be disciplined with, with how you run your business. And I think a lot of clubs are now thinking about whether they've actually got it right in the past. And I don't think it'll ever be the same, but I think it, it, some of the things that we've learnt out of this pandemic are, um, are going to be critical for clubs going forward. So that leads me to the next question in regards to just simply the West Coast Eagles. Will the West Coast Eagles ever be the same again? Well, certainly we've changed in a number of respects, and I think that's probably because we've had to make some people redundant. We've had to look at our business. Um, we know there's probably more redundancies coming. We know there's probably people who are having to take um, fairly big salary cuts, uh, and, but we know people um, are resilient in football, though, and we've got some outstanding people. And, I guess for our business, uh, we're going to be paying less for people to do more. And I don't think that's probably different to a lot of people um, who are running businesses at the moment. And it's whether you're up for that, uh, because it's, it's going to need more people doing, doing a, a, a great deal more work. And uh, that's critical for all businesses at the moment, but certainly ours, and that's where football will change. It's, um, you're going to have to be multi-skilled, you're going to have to be able to do a number of different things. And I think we found that when our players and our staff went away, they, they all pitched in doing numerous different jobs and, and they found that they can do it. So I, I think it's a, uh, an opportunity rather than a disaster for us. Let's talk about that soft cap impact as well of the West Coast Eagles. Your football department, everyone's been talking about that. There's gonna be less money, less players. Where is that in regards to the setup of 2021 right now and how different an impact is it going to have on performance? Yeah, well, th this is probably one of the things that's really tough for all football clubs, but certainly ours. We, we were running our football department on 9.7 million, which sounds like a lot of money, um, but the people we employ uh, deserve to get paid and the costs that we experience playing in an elite competition out of Perth uh, are extraordinary, really. But uh, next year and, uh, and the cuts this year mean that it's 6.2. So we've got to cut you know, 3.5 to 3.7 million out of our budget. Uh, and the only way you can do that is people have to take drastic reductions in salary and some people will be made redundant. So it's had a massive impact, not just on people's livelihoods, but also on the, the psychology of being involved with the club. And, and uh, it's disappointing, but, but uh, great credit to our people. They, they understand it's not something that they're enjoying, but they understand the situation that we're in. In regards to that, how difficult is it? I can't imagine what it's like, and I'm sure there's CEOs and HR people in this room to sit in a room with people who have been on the journey with West Coast for you, for your football department, for your finance department, for your marketing, where you sit and say to people, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. Is that the, is that the most graphic downside of this situation? Oh, I think so. Look, we can talk about um, everything else. The first thing is that try and keep people safe and healthy. I mean, we're all trying to do that. The second part of the journey is, well, some people uh, have had to go. Hopefully, and in some cases, we've been very lucky. We've had some great support from BHP, Mineral Resources, the Wurrupunda Foundation and others who've been able to um, employ people and 
give them the opportunity to keep working and, and that's been extraordinary to have partners who've um, come forward and said, look, we can use a lot of your people, um, show us some skills that they've got and let's have a look and see who we can employ. Uh, I think that's been critical for our club to be able to, and at one stage we had about 35 of our staff working with, um, with other employers. So that's been, that's been great. Um, hopefully some of those things are sustainable in the longer term, but uh, it has been a, a difficult journey. And, it, and it's those difficult conversations I don't think anyone enjoys. And it's, um, it's a bit gloomy. I've been a bit gloomy this, today, haven't I, no, really? But, um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a difficult, it's a very difficult conversation to have, but I'm, I'm sure people are very understanding. Take out the West Coast Eagles. Do you think all the AFL clubs will survive this situation? Will the AFL make sure of it? Well, I hope so. I hope they can survive. But it, look, it's, it's getting perilously close to, I think the AFL have borrowed $600 million, um, probably going to use about $400 million of that just this year to get the season underway and get it through. Now, if clubs then can't understand that they have to live within their means going forward and how they're going to operate, we may have some casualties. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. But uh, certainly um, for the sake of all the livelihoods that are working at the clubs, I'm, I'm hoping we can keep it going. But we are going to have to change the way we do business and every club's going to be the same. We have to change the way we do things. We already have. Hopefully others are doing the same thing. Last two for you. Have you been pleased with the way that your football team and club and players and staff have handled hub life and you must be wrapped that they are on a five game winning streak. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, <laughs> I think we're all happy with that. Uh, look, the, the, the players and, and staff have been outstanding. There's no doubt that um, it was tough in the hub the first couple of weeks in particular and because we were first to put our hand up to do it, um, it was a difficult thing and the AFL needed clubs to participate in that first hub, otherwise the season was not going to, to get off the ground. With our guys and great credit to the footy department, Adam and, and Craig Vozzo and, and the guys who put their hand up to do it, we, uh, we got the season underway. And it was, it was a really difficult couple of weeks, but they worked out some of the things that they needed to do whilst there. I think the players got a, a really good perspective on their teammates and how they tick and how they work together to, to reinvigorate themselves and they've been able to do that. And of course they've got back home and I, I'm not sure it wasn't worse when they were in quarantine at home than it was when they were in, in the hub life because they weren't allowed to do anything. And um, consequently it was pretty difficult the first two weeks back, but they've responded well. Uh, the staff have done a marvellous job and, and you know, five on the trots pretty good in these conditions. Before I let you go, I'm sure there's a couple of people in here in this room, a, a, gen, a general thanks from the football club to those who are not just here today, but across the board for the West Coast Eagles for their role in making sure that the club continues to forge and, and go forward this year in very difficult circumstances. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Tim. Look, I'd, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming today. Look, it's a great, it's a great turnout when you consider, you know, over 700 people here today and our support has been unbelievable. When you consider last year, we had 92,000 members. As of today, we have 97,500 members. And it's, in, it's increasing. And we are um, indebted to our members and our corporate staff, our, our corporate um, people who are, are being involved with our club our staff members who have been really diligent through this period and have been uh, extremely disciplined. But we can't do it without uh, the support of our fans and our, our, our corporate um, supporters and our sponsors. So to everyone who's in the room, thank you very much. Thank you for supporting our club. We're, uh, we're indebted to you and uh, we're looking forward to the, um, the rest of the season. Let's hope, it, hope we can get it, uh, get it off and make sure that we can work towards a final series, which hopefully we'll be um, participating in. Put your hands together for Trevor Nisbet, ladies and gentlemen, our Chief Executive of the West Coast Eagles, for his very candid responses here today.